I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's flute tip is on playing loudly. We all want to have bigger fortes. We've, I've heard, I've heard great huge sounds coming from flutists and I'm always a little bit envious that they can get that big of a sound because I've always felt like my sound isn't that big. Now, there is a difference in flutes and the size of your flute, whether you have a 0.16 or a 0.18, uh, there and the different head joints. And if you add some platinum to your uh, head joint or your lip plate, or there, there are those things that do really give um, a big difference in how loudly you can play. But you can do some things yourself to extend and expand your range so that you can get a bigger sound. Now, uh, I have an exercise that I'm, I'm going to show you to play. Uh, it's not my exercise. I can't remember if it's Roger Stevens, it might be, or a Kincaid exercise, but anyways, I'm just saying it's not mine. Uh, but I use it all the time. I had a teacher when I was at Eastman School of Music teach me this, and I really like it because I do feel like it was started my journey to start expanding my range so that my fortes, instead of being this big, could be here from piano to forte. I, I want to have a, a big range, not you know from piano to forte. Now, to start with, you need to have a good embouchure. You need to have good support. And you can go back and see some of my videos on embouchure and support because they all are going to factor in on how softly you can play and how loudly you can play. But let's just say everything's great here. And so now what can you do? Well, there's a couple things you can do to start playing a little bit louder. Uh, one of them is to open the cavity in your mouth. If your cavity and your teeth spacing is small, it's going to make your sound smaller. <laughs> That's about as loud as I can play with a closed up mouth. Now I opened up and that allowed all this sound to come out. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit here before I give you the exercise. Opening up the cavity of your mouth will open up your sound. Closing that cavity is going to make your sound smaller. Okay, what I mean by that is open your teeth. Basically, open your teeth. Once your teeth are opened, then maybe flatten your tongue. If I were teaching a voice student and I wanted them to, to open up their sound and have more coming out, I would talk about how the soft palate has to be raised and the back of the tongue needs to be lowered and it opens up the mouth cavity and opens up your throat for that sound or just have an echo chamber into your sinus cavity. Singers want to have their sound echoing through their sinuses and we flute players want to add that to our sound as well. It's going to give us so much more resonance in our sound and can give you a much bigger sound. Now, I want to play softly through my sinus cavity as well, but adding all of that, keeping the back of the tongue down, the roof of the mouth, soft palate raised. I can feel it right now when I think about doing that. It gives me that feeling of, oh, I'm going to be lifted away. Um, but when I play that way, I mean, I'm overblowing, so I'm getting a partial in there um, because uh, I want to see where where's my edge? Where do, is my edge for my forte? How far before I crack? And when you experiment with what's going on in here and below, this is not one of those times where I say, hold back your air. Don't let it all out. Right now, this is your one chance. Blow. Let that air out. Okay, as I'm doing that, there's a couple other things that I'm thinking about doing. And one of them is putting air in my cheeks. Now, I don't want to do like 
There's been some jazz players of old, the trumpet players, and they really balloon out their cheeks. Um, that's not what I'm talking about here, uh, but I do have air pockets, and those air pockets help to expand and resonate the sound. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, I've got air both sides of my cheeks. Some people uh, like to put air on one side more. And either side, you saw it here, either side, whatever is comfortable for you. And some actually like it up here. I feel like that does give me a little bit more sound when I think about it here, but I feel like I have less control over my flute. And you could see the flute really wobbling. Now, uh, I'm not going to perform with my flute that wobbly, but again, we're talking extremes here. You need to practice to an extreme so that you know where your edge is and you know how far you can go before you reach that edge. But if you don't push those boundaries, you're not gonna push that sound. Now here's the exercise. It's called the flat scale exercise. And it's slow, but not so slow you can't do it in one breath. So I go up in one breath, I take a breath, and then I come down, uh, when I come down the arpeggio, that's in another breath. And uh, when you play this exercise, I'll demonstrate it and explain it to you in a second. Uh, I am pushing the limit. I don't care if I crack the sound. I don't care if the, another partial comes on. I want to explore how do I use this to gain more sound. Now, uh, another point to consider when you're expanding your tone, uh, Marina Piccinini, I heard her talk about this, where she feels like when she wants to be, have bigger sound, she pushes a little bit more forward with her flute. I would experiment with that a little bit to see what does that do for you? Can you push forward a little bit more, adjust the embouchure slightly so that you still have the embouchure. You're not pulling it away from your lip, but you're bringing it forward. I think that allows more vibration through your flute. Uh, but if you're a scientist and you know vibrations, maybe you can explain that a little bit better. All right, flat scales. Basically, you go up. So let's say it was a C scale. I'm going to go up and I'm going to add a flat seven and the normal seven, okay? C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, B natural, C, and then I'm gonna come down the flat seven arpeggio. C, B flat, G, E, C, all right? Now I'm gonna do it. I'm pushing the limits, I'm blowing. Um, most of the time when my students are doing this exercise, they are afraid to blow. And I say more, 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 more until they are ready to crack, till that tone is ready to go, push it. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to explore how big does my mouth cavity have to be? How much air can I put in my cheeks? Uh, you're not going to find the answer going through it one time. So now I'm going to move to C sharp and do the same thing. A C sharp scale with a B natural and a B sharp. Now it's okay if you hear some throat noise. So I'm playing so big, I hear eh, 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 in my throat. That's okay. I don't want to hear that if I'm performing a solo and I have to play really loudly. I don't want to hear that throat noise. But right now it's coming because it's sort of a sympathetic vibration because I'm pushing the limits. So if you don't have a throat noise, ask yourself if maybe you're not pushing enough. Now go through all the way up 
um, for my students and for myself, really, I'll do that uh, up an octave. So I'll do C, C sharp, D, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, and stop on C, middle C. So I'm going to play flat scale all the way up, adding the flat seventh and the natural flat seven, um, up one octave. So only go an octave. And then on another week, or after I've practiced them for two weeks, or even a month, then I will start on middle C and go to high C and work on getting very loud all the way up there. So if I start on middle C, actually I started on my C above that, my high C, and went to my uh, third octave C way up there at the top. So my fourth octave C. Uh, it's okay if you make mistakes in there. It's okay. I added some extra notes in there because the scale isn't the deal. The deal is blow. Blow as much as you can. Find the limits of your sound and then you know where to back off. I can go that far without cracking. I know where my limits are. Now I can push the limits of my forte and be bigger than I ever was before. It's a fantastic way to start expanding your tone. You'll find if you work on this for one octave and then do it for the next octave, all the way up to that high fourth octave C, it will start expanding your tone. It's not how you work on playing softly. We're not trying to do that at all. You're not worried about cracking. You're not worrying about partials. You're just exploring what gives you the sound you're looking for. Um, I'm also not terribly concerned about going sharp as I play because you're pushing that limit. There's plenty of time to work with a metronome and, and learn how to play forte with the sound uh, in tune. Right now, that's not the issue. All right, work on these flat scales, put them into practice, expand your uh, um, embouchure, open up inside, put air in your cheeks, bring your flute a little more forward, and let that sound resonate into your sinus cavity. You'll find that you're going to get an amazingly big sound with the flute you already own. That's today's flute tip. If you like today's flute tip, press the like button, subscribe, comment below, and share it with your friends.